Aloha mai kako. My name is Tiffany Kakalia. I stand with my family and those that came before me in opposition of this permit application and in protection of Mauna Kea. Like many others here, Mauna Kea has always been the pico of my existence. She has, is, and will always be ohana to us. Several years back, I decided to take an active role in caring for Vahikupuna, the place of my ancestors. I committed to a volunteer position on the Cultural Advisory Council, Kahuku Mauna, with the Office of Mauna Kea Management. This eight-year experience allowed me to become more aware of the University of Hawaii's inability to adequately manage cultural resources of this sacred site. It also provided me with firsthand um, experience and exposure to meetings and conversations that clearly demonstrated severe insensitivity to Native Hawaiian rights, beliefs, and practices in a manner that has been extremely offensive to me, not just as a practitioner of Aloha Aina, but as a volunteer advisor to the Office of Mauna Kea Management, its managing board, and the Chancellor of UH Hilo. I'm concerned that the BLNR's direction to support the development of the 30-meter telescope on sacred land, which happens to be in Conservation District, I find this action especially troubling after the board publicly endorsed the Hawaii commitment with the International Union for Conservation of Nature. In the, in the Hawaii context section of this document, Aloha Aina is expressed as an inherent part of the traditions and customs of Native Hawaiians, embodies the mutual respect for one another and commitment of service to the natural world. It goes on to mention that embodying Aloha Aina globally will help address the tremendous environmental challenges we face and that the values and wisdom of indigenous peoples, elders, and the world's rich faith and spiritual communities offer a deeper understanding of our connection with nature. Yet the actions of this board are contrary to any of those statements. I believe this to be a gross act of cultural appropriation. Native Hawaiian health practitioners holding doctorate degrees in clinical psychology, education, political science, and health services have testified on the philosophy of Aloha Aina, all of which were disregarded in the hearing officer's recommendations to the board. Testimony was given that the quality of health for indigenous people are related to the quality of health of the land because of their connection to an ancestral relations to the land. Native people have a historical responsibility, a cultural responsibility, under Aloha Aina and Malama Aina. Malama Aina is stewardship of land. We are obligated as descendants of this Aina to, pro to protect it in perpetuity. It is an obligation that many of us learn from a very young age. Aloha Aina, patriotism, is being loyal to the traditions of obligated stewardship. Both Aloha Aina and Malama Aina are considered Mauliola. The term Mauliola can be translated as the breath or source of life, the power of healing. It is balanced wellness. The World Health Organization defines well-being as a state of balance between the physical, emotional, social, and spiritual well-being of an individual. The development of the 30-meter telescope will most certainly cause adverse impacts and irreparable harm to the well-being of those that practice Aloha Aina, a native right and responsibility to protect Kamauna Awakea in perpetuity. I'm very concerned that the University of Hawaii is the applicant of this permit. The application is a contradiction to the Board of Regents Hawaii Papa Okeao policy. The policy created, it's a policy created with the assistance of Native Hawaiian academics, practitioners, and elders to work towards establishing the university as a premier indigenous serving institution in the nation. There were in fact several witnesses testifying in opposition of this permit application that have contributed to the development of this particular policy and literally work on implementing it to date. 
such testimony was disregarded, was discredited, not just by the hearings officers, hearing officer in her recommendations to the board, but also by the legal team of the University of Hawaii itself. To me, another example of how the university systems continuously choose to almost ignore the advice of culture advisors. In addition to this, I'd like to note that the University of Hawaii is the only medical school in the nation that has a specific department tasked to to address health issues and concerns of the indigenous population of its host culture. The John A. Burns School of Medicine, Department of Native Hawaiian Health, has led numerous research projects relating to indigenous wellness, which means that the University of Hawaii has access to a lot of this information on hand. Lead faculty and staff of this department provided a written statement as concerned healthcare professionals in opposition of the TMT development because of the adverse impacts it may have on the well-being of Native Hawaiians. Once again, expert testimony is disregarded in the hearing officer's recommendations. The judicial temperament of these proceedings has been nothing less than bias in favor of the applicant and developers. The opinions of well-recognized, respected, and qualified individuals testifying on behalf of the contestants have been repeatedly dismissed on the basis that the individuals do not provide studies, statistics, or factual evidence that objectively shows the TMT project negatively impacting public health and welfare, public health safety and welfare. If the opinions of public health experts may not be relied upon to show the extent of impacts on public health from the TMT project, then any opinions to the contrary should similarly be dismissed as valid. If the only type of evidence qualified to show the extent of impact of desecration of sacred spaces on public health are studies specific to TMT project, the one and only unpublished study under peer review mentioned in testimonies show that there is a a conclusive statistical impact on public health even prior to the actual building of the TMT project. The TMT project does not satisfy the eighth criterion. The eighth criterion found in HAR 13530 states that the proposed land use will not be materially detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare. The burden of proof rests on the petitioners. The BLNL rules provide that the applicant shall have the burden of demonstrating that the proposed land use is consistent with the criteria set forth. As the party proposing a land use in the conservation district, UH Hilo is clearly the applicant in this matter. The petitioners did not provide any study research or reliable statistics showing that increased stress on the public from development of pristine sacred land of Mauna Kea would not be materially, materially detrimental to public health, safety, and welfare. The burden of proof is satisfied with a preponderance of the evidence, HAR 13135K, similarly provides the party initiating the proceeding and in the case of proceedings on alleged violations of law, the department shall have the burden of proof, including the burden of producing evidence as well as burden of persuasion. The quantum proof of the quantum proof shall be a preponderance of the evidence. The findings and conclusions showing that the eighth criterion was successfully met by the applicant is erroneous and the application should be denied for the following reasons. First, merely discrediting testimonies of recognized public health professionals does not satisfy the applicant's burden to show the TMT project has not materially detrimental that is not materially detrimental to public health. Second, the existing mitigation measures are invalid because the BLNR does not have sufficient evidence to show extent of impact on public health upon which mitigation measures would be based. 
The BLNR should deny the applicant's CDUP until the applicant can show by a preponderance of the evidence that the extent of the public health impacts can be appropriately mitigated by the measures offered. Again, my name is Tiffany Kakalia, and I stand with my kupuna, makua, keiki, and moopuna in opposition of this permit application and development efforts of the TMT project. We stand in our traditional practice of aloha aina oya i'o in protection of our sacred mountain, Kamauna Awakea. I just have one um, comment, and it was, uh, it's in regard to a statement made from University Council regarding their consultation, the university's consultation with um, OHA in this whole management process. Um, in the Comprehensive Management Plan, under the Cultural Resource Management um, subplan, I believe it's Action Item 1, CR1, it states that um, Kaukumon is to take the lead in having discussions in determining appropriateness of use or cultural anything, but take the lead in a conversation with lineal cultural descendants, practitioners of the Mauna, and the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And so my concern is that they're making a statement that they have consulted with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And I, I, I challenged the board to look into that because I did. And when I went to OHA and I asked when those dates were, they weren't able to give me any because there are none. I didn't talk to community liaisons as the office might have. I talked to the legal and policy division. So if that's something that's being stated for, you know, to appease the board that OHA is involved, I challenge you to look for those dates. Um, and again, as someone, a volunteer on that cultural advisory council, there was hardly ever in the eight years that I was there where consultation was the council going out to the community, looking and talking with these particular people. Um, we asked, and for whatever reasons, Uncle Hank or practitioners would come to the office. The office wouldn't take that. The council wouldn't take that initiative. So again, that was just my uh, mana'o on what was stated. <laughs>